Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to another episode of Pull the Trigger, and you're an absolute, let me tell you, today I have an amazing guest, friend, sister on Pull the Trigger. Today's episode is going to be so much fun. You're going to want to take notes. Before I introduce this gorgeous goddess who's right next to me, normally, <laughs> normally I'm not as fortunate to have my guests with me, but today I am. She's here in my home. But before I introduce her, just quickly want to introduce myself. My name is Sandra Gonzalez. This is your first episode with Pull the Trigger. Welcome. I'm a retired Marine officer turned life coach speaker. And I help high caliber women and men kick self-doubt to the curb. I help them cultivate sexy confidence so they can authentically step into any room and stand out as a leader. So in today's episode, this gorgeous goddess right next to me, <laughs> who I've actually spent a couple of days with now, we were actually in Malibu yesterday. Mm -hmm. We had this amazing photo shoot is the gorgeous Jessica J.D., who's a beautiful friend and sister of mine that I've known for 20 years now. We were talking about this earlier in the week mm -hmm. that we've known each other for two decades now. She is a branding strategist. She's an author. She's a highly motivated speaker, entrepreneur who is going to give you a wealth of information. So again, you're going to want to give us your undivided attention. Why? Because when you give us your undivided attention, it equates to retention. So make sure you turn off your phone. Don't get distracted because it's going to be a fun episode. So having said that, this amazing woman is also a veteran. Right. And that's actually where I know her. She served 13 years of honorable service as a U.S. Marine. And she's also the founder of the Alchemy Effect. And if you see my precious fine jewelry, right, it's part of her jewelry collection. Beautiful, beautiful, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, but again, you're in for a treat. We're going to share some of her experiences, not only in the military, but as an entrepreneur. Now with so many things that she's done, I mean, this woman has enabled me to bring in more passive income into my business. So you're in for an absolute treat. Miss Jessica J.D., if you would introduce yourself. And I'm just honored to have you here with me, boo, because it's always fun. <laughs> it's always fun when we get together and now we're doing this episode together. Thank you, Sandra. And thank you all for being here and for listening to Sandra's beautiful podcast, Pull the Trigger. <laughs> I, ever since your first episode, I'm like, oh man, when can I come on? When can I come on? <laughs> and I've been listening and it's brought so much value and joy to my life to listen to you. So thank you. It's an honor to be here with you, Sandra. Thank and you. I am Jessica JD, Marine Corps veteran. I am an entrepreneur of now going on eight years. I left the service in 2014. I got married and a few years after that got divorced, which sent me hurtling into some of the greatest fears of my life, which mm. I will tell you about here shortly. And I have been dabbling back and forth in about five or six different industries in the last eight years. And the last three years, I have really finally found my niche and my purpose. And I'm going to share with you in this episode, the things that I overcame, the challenges that I experienced, some tips mm. and tricks from some of my most favorite quotes and mentors, as well as some things that Sandra, as my own coach and my mentor mm. over the years has helped me with. So mm. thank you guys so much for being here. I can't wait to get to know you more in the comments. So please please engage, reach out to Sandra, reach out to myself. If you hear anything inspires you or anything that you want to hear more of. 
this woman is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, I'm biased. You know, she's my sister, my Marine Corps sister that I love dearly and truly honored to have you here with me, sis. But, you know, one of the many things and, and I love how you mentioned a little bit about your history, your background, and how it ties into be, you know, being an entrepreneur, because this is what our listeners, you know, this is what this highly engaged, ambitious, high caliber woman entrepreneur wants to know is how can I possibly ignite my breakthrough? How can I make that transition, so to speak? How can I face my fears? So I would say that would be the perfect segue into my first question mm -hmm. that, you know, as, as female entrepreneurs, we're constantly, not, not only as entrepreneurs, but veterans, you know, we were up against, we're constantly up against a wall of stereotypes, right? Yes, mm -hmm. That women aren't strong enough. Women, you know, aren't intelligent enough. Women aren't capable of or competent or don't women lack the courage mm -hmm. nonsense would it, wouldn't you say all <laughs> nonsense erroneous <laughs> on all counts i say <laughs> take it from two that's right fierce female marine veterans right that have been there done that mm -hmm. so i i love this topic of helping women pull the trigger because it's about constantly facing these fears that sometimes, yeah. especially as entrepreneurs, we don't know about, right, sis? We, right. We've spoken at great length about some of the fears that we're going to constantly experience as we, you know, transition and, and scale our businesses. Mm -hmm. So I love again, that you gave that background. So our listeners know where you're coming from mm -hmm. and what you personally did. So what was like your biggest fear in the military or your biggest fear as a new entrepreneur? And, and what did you learn from that? Great question. My biggest fear, I think, as I was stepping into the Marine Corps, was not as great as my fear stepping out of the Marine Corps after 13 years. And I bring that up because when you're doing anything new, but also familiar, it's sort of like, what can I expect from joining the Marine Corps? You can research online. You can talk to men mentors. Um, think back to your first career for our listeners and even you, the first job that you ever had, Sandra, like, yeah. you know, I'm excited. This is the unknown. Hopefully I have a boss or a manager or someone who's going to walk me through. For me, it was Sonic drive through I was excited and I was scared and I was barely 16 years old and I was working, but I was still, there's still those anxieties of what's new, but at least you know that there's someone who is going to be able to manage your day-to-day -day tasks. They're going to give you a guidebook. You have regulations. They tell you what uniform to wear most of the time when you're starting a new job. Well, that's corporate. Mm. Our demographic is entrepreneurs. And some of you who are listening may be veterans and can relate to what Sandra and I are talking about having served honorably in the Marine Corps. But going into that, I was excited, but I knew so many women had done this successfully before me. I think to myself, okay. I don't think I'm going to die. I think I'm going to make mm. it. These other women have done this before me. I can do this. Exactly. I use them as an inspiration mm. and it really did quell some of those fears. Now, on the other hand, for entrepreneurship, depend, especially if you're creating a new product or a new service, or you're reinventing something that inspired you, which is what you did as well, yes, ma'am. right? Your jewelry line, mm -hmm. your book, you know, yeah. please, please continue. Yes. So I'm thinking to myself, I've never done this. I don't have the, the uniform to wear every day. No one's going to tell me how to dress. Mm. No one's going to tell me how to present myself. No one's going to tell me what hour to show up to work, to have the discipline to actually appear and get the job done. So I will tell you, it was most fearful for me leaving the military, knowing that I was responsible for myself, mm. my hours, my, my bills, my mortgage, my car payment and everything. And, and no matter what, every single day, whether I slept in or whether I busted my butt, everything fell on my shoulders. That was probably mm. the scariest thing to me was feeling like I was alone and not having those guidelines and the, the mentors and the, I guess you could say bosses, managers, the oversight mm. as a 33 year old woman. In 2014, I was scared out of my wits to leave the Marine Corps. Scared 
out of her wits, but you did it anyways. I did. What, what, what gave you that push? What gave you that nudge? What, you, you know what I'm talking about? The, which is what a lot of men and women, I would say, need now. What gave you that motivate, intrinsic motivation to step outside your comfort zone and do the thing that must be done? I, it's my favorite question so far that you've ever asked me ah. because for me, I feel like we all sort of have that nudge. You're meant for more. You're meant for more. It's that little angel on the side. And then there's another little, maybe like a little darkness that might have a little bit of, you know, confidence issues or anything. It's like, you know what? You might never make it. And so you have these two different voices of your own mind and higher self and lower self. We all have that shadow version of ourselves, right? So it's like, who's, which, which of those voices is going to be more powerful? Mm. It got to the point where I realized that I was meant for more and to serve more people. I would, I didn't want to just be limited to mm -hmm. leadership inside of the military service. Mm -hmm. And especially for me personally, experiencing that spiritual awakening, um, and saying, you know what, I think I'm meant to do something really big. I'm not sure what it is. It might just be for a small niche. It might be for, you know, a region or the entire world. Um, who knows what that is, but I know that I meant for more. And for me, what really pushed me over the edge to answer your question, sis, yes. was that voice finally got so loud that I mm. could not ignore it anymore. Mm. And regardless of what fears that I had and whatever that unknown was, my, my, my thing is like, you know what? I have to just trust myself. I have to take this leap. And I know that I'm resourceful enough and adaptable enough and I can bend and I'm a chameleon and I can figure this out. I've done so many hard things in my life. Mm. So I feel like if you go back and you look at all the hard things that you've done in your life, and if our listeners go back and they ask you guys, ask yourselves, you know, what have I done in my life that I had no idea mm. that I was capable of doing? You put yourself into those vibrations mm -hmm. slowly over time. You'll realize that that shadow voice that's trying to convince you that you're not worthy or you're not capable or you're not able, or it's the wrong time, or just wait a little longer. That voice will slowly fade into the background. The more that we remember our power and our successes and what we're truly mm. capable of that voice will get so loud. I assure you that you will know exactly when the right time is to make that jump. Totally agree, Jessica. <laughs> totally agree. And it comes through experience, right? And it's one of the things that our listeners that I often share with, you know, it's truly listening to what's calling at you, not what's clawing at you, because what's clawing at us is this negative voice. So like you, you were describing which voice are you going to listen to? It's the one you feed. It's the one you nourish, you know, 100%. it's the one that you, and yeah. you, you finally get fed up and say, you know what? I'm going to believe in myself because like Jessica was saying, I've, what haven't I done in my past? Mm -hmm. What haven't I over came to be where I'm at. So I have to keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's just such a beautiful uh, takeaway for our listeners, you know, for them to understand is, okay, so what I need to do is listen to the right voice, what's calling at me. And there comes a point where you just enough with the BS, so to speak, you got to pull that trigger and give yourself a, a, a fighting chance, if you will. To, to succeed. So, and I also love how you, you highlighted the previous accomplishments, which is something that we lack, I believe as women, mm -hmm. it's like, no, babe, look at your previous accomplishments, look at what you accomplished so you can move forward. So I, I, I love what you're sharing with me, these golden nuggets you're giving us, Jessica, thank you so much. Um, I, what comes to mind is when I was in the Marine Corps, one of the things that helped me was really have this high emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. you know, that is not only applicable to leadership in the military, mm -hmm. but leaders in, uh, in the entrepreneurship world. Right. So how have you, and, and I asked this question because I know you <laughs> firsthand. You haven't told me the question yet. By yeah, the way. <laughs> but you're, I have not, but you're very spiritual. You're very intuitive. How have you honed in to that calling to really, you know, um, under, you know, uh, mature, like mm -hmm. specifically get a little bit more 
maturity, so to speak, around your emotional intelligence. You know, and I'll, uh, if you can elaborate a little bit more around that, some people might not understand what I'm talking about, but it's, you know, developing self-awareness within yourself to understand, well, why am I stuck right now? You know, is it really somebody, something holding me back? Or is this this self-limitation that I that I keep hearing in my head over and over again that's really hindering my progress? So what how did you incorporate your emotional intelligence, so to speak? You know, it, it as an entrepreneur now to say, you know what, I wanna, I'm gonna move forward. As an author, I'm going to come up with this fine jewelry collection and put it out in the world, which I'm wearing, mm. by the way, which is gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I know that's a it's a very generic question, but you get the gist of it. Yes, if you would please answer Absolutely. beautiful. How? Oh, wow. What if I love being here? I love our talks. You know what's fun <laughs> about this, everybody? <laughs> is we have these talks constantly all day and all night. And we now do, we're just now sharing we're just it. Sharing. So it's, yeah. it's just source. I love it. And um, I love these talks with you and I'm honored to be here again. So thank you. But I, how did I incorporate my emotional intelligence? How did I almost accelerate it? How did I 10 exit? How did I, what got me from point A to point B faster versus slower? Right. Is yes. the question. Yes, yes. Yes. So I will say that, um, number one was that voice in my head got so loud. I couldn't deny it anymore. Number two, it would most definitely be research. Um, and I go back to number, I want to talk about number two for just a second and I'll move on to a few other tips okay. and the reasons and how I did it. But number two is if you have the tools and you equip yourself with the knowledge of what is to be expected as best you can, it becomes less scary. All of a sudden you're like, Oh, this isn't as scary as I thought. I'm learning more about what I'm about to do. And so anything that I dreamt about, I still have so many dreams. It's not only my goal to be a speaker and an author and a coach. I want to be a filmmaker and I want to be a storyteller and I want to host these amazing live events and for other people to bring the world together. So there's so many things on my bucket list that I'm knocking off and I'm thinking, how do I do all of this all at once? Like, let me focus on this, knock it off so I can get to the next one. I don't like leaving things unfinished. Mm -hmm. So for me, I thought, well, what does it take to become an author? And I, I looked and I reached out and I found Book in a Box, which is a service. Um, I can't remember the founder, but they would write a book for you by just doing interviews. Yeah. They'll interview you and then they'll put a book out for you. And it's anywhere between $25,000 to $100,000. Mm, interesting. And um, so it's like, oh my gosh, that's very expensive. I don't know if I really want to do that mm -hmm. for someone else to have my voice and control of my story. So some people that rings true to me, it really didn't. So I said, Okay, moving on. And then I found um, another service uh, that didn't end very well. And I'll save that story for another time, but that I had paid some money to, to help me walk through the process of determining what I wanted to write. Um, that was a little bit helpful and it ended up not resonating with me. I ended up moving on. And finally, I just started writing one day. And I said, you know what, the right person, the right editor, the right people Ooh. will come along. And I just started writing because like I said, there's a voice in your head that makes you do it. You don't have a choice when it's your passion. Mm. You can't help, but somehow do it or get involved. And if, if you or I, or anyone down the road is like, I wonder if this is right for me. My question to you is, are you excited about it? And mm. are you losing sleep because you are so envisioning and wishing and dreaming about the life that you will have? have one day if you achieve this dream that you have or this passion or this hobby or this new venture it doesn't have to be big it doesn't have to be small but if you're excited about it yes you're on the right path the answer is yes you have you can stop doubting yourself that's your answer right there mm -hmm. if you are excited if it takes away your peace during the day because you're like oh, I wish I could do this I wish I could do that I'm just not and this is what's getting in my way move those things out of your way it's just as simple as that flow so number two, I think, um, is, is incredibly important. Research what you're about to do, do equip yourself to the point where it's not as scary so that you can finally get to that starting point yes. because that starting point is what propels you to the finish line. If you don't take that foot in that first step, we're never going to even get to the middle of the road, let alone to the end, to be yes. proud of something. And I would say third and finally, especially surrounding emotional intelligence is not only listening to your intuition. One, mm -hmm. two is researching and equipping yourself with the tools and the knowledge necessary to make it less fearful for you. The third, mm -hmm. I would absolutely say is to work on yourself and 
determine the why for what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's introspection. That's emotional intelligence. And that is taking a step out of yourself and envision you looking in on your life, what you assigned value to at a very young age, why it has become that dream. Is it the reward associated to the achievement of that dream? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it family stability? Is it the dream car that you've always wanted? It's a special Shelby Mustang GT or whatever. That you're like, there's only one in the world and I want this. No matter what the why is for you, it's important to peel back those layers and to ask yourself, why do I want this? Why do I want this? Yes. Is this for my family? Is this for me? Is this for status? Is this for income? Is this because it's a, it's a bucket list that I promised myself as a child that I'd really love to follow through and feel good about regardless of what your reason is mm -hmm. for that goal. If you don't understand the why there is a very good chance that along the road and while you're going, you're going to be like, this is not really what I want to do. Mm. And it's better to know that now mm -hmm. before you start than it is to figure out in the middle or towards the end and realize, you know what? I didn't really think about it at the time, but I wasn't mm. actually doing this to me or for me. I was doing it for something else that I really wish I would have explored a little earlier on. So to recap those emotional intelligence for me, the first is most definitely going to be, oh man, circle back. What was it? I remember two and three. What was first? You said research. Help me out, guys, in the comments. <laughs> this isn't live, but I wish it was. <laughs> I know research stood out for me. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece that you were saying was um, to really uh, hone in on your intuition mm -hmm. and, you know, which is emotional intelligence mm -hmm. and just make that decision yeah. to move forward. The first was the voice, listening to the voice oh, in the beginning. <laughs> the second is to make the commit to the decision to listen to the voice, to decide. The second being researching, making yourself comfortable, be less fearful. And the, the third, voice. yes, the mm -hmm. voice. And it's um, find out your why. Your why. And Simon your Sinek, why. for those of you who are big readers or podcasters, yes. he has a book that is one of my top five in, in discovering emotional intelligence and also leadership, mm -hmm. specifically in entrepreneurship. And it's called Start With Why. And he has exercises you can do. And that really, I mean, it's just once you figure out the motivation behind the reason that we want what we want, it really moves all of the other distractions out of the way and creates mm -hmm. a much clearer path. And I, I love how you mentioned that, sis, because ultimately, Ultimately, you're right. That's a driving force. This is a driving factor that's going to get you out of your comfort zone because we do things not for ourselves because you wouldn't, you know, you, you wouldn't have the motivate, the intrinsic motivation to take action. But when you think, what about my kids or I'm doing this for my parents or I'm doing this for, you know, whatever your why might be combination of all. It could be a con. Absolutely. Then you're going to be able to pull the trigger. Then you're going to be able to take that strategic action that gives you that end result you want. But I love how you, you gave us, you know, an example of listening to your voice, doing some research and then having your why. And, and she brings up these three points because She's very intuitive. She's, you know, as you can see, I brought up this question about emotional intelligence because this woman has given, she truly has given me, you know, inspirational breakthroughs, breakthroughs that I'm like, oh, shoot, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> I'll make you more money because of you. Thank you. I, you know, you've, you've helped me plan conferences, seminars, you know, you've helped me bring in another multiple, you know, multiple streams of income. And that's what it's about generating this passive income. So you can stay focused on your passion, you know, and, and, and I, I love that sis. But um, having said that, what, you know, I know you're passionate about ha helping them or listeners mm -hmm. ignite more breakthroughs. Yes. So, you know, how could they, you know, how could they really ignite? So say they're stuck, which is mm -hmm. a common trend mm -hmm. amongst women and men, how could they ignite a breakthrough? And I know you've already given us some examples, mm -hmm. but somebody who's truly stuck, what comes up for you as you hear me say that? How could you help them ignite a breakthrough in this moment? I So I'm going to talk to three different versions of listeners right now. Ooh. There's three categories who are listening, and it's up to you to determine which one you are. You guys Ooh. ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. So ready. the first category 
is, okay, you know what? I'm in a vibration of, I, I need things right now. I need money. I need change. I need to do this. I'm, I'm not happy. Um, something's going wrong. I'm not in a state of high vibrational mm. attunement. And I know I am out of whack right now. Um, so one out of whack, you're out of whack and you're in a state of need, right? The second is I'm doing okay. There's a few little things I want to tweak. I don't need anything. I'm longing for some changes here and there. Mm. Um, you know, there's one thing maybe in my personal relationships or my marriage or my, you know, romantic partner, what we're connecting on or not connecting on. I want to change maybe my career. I want to switch from here to here. I want a promotion, but I'm not getting it. Those kind of breakthroughs where you just turn the dial a little bit. You're pretty, you're pretty happy with your life. Um, but you're not in a state of need and you're not out of whack. You are just looking for a little bit of tweak. Mm. The third is you're at a very, very high vibration. You're generally happy. You're not negative. Very rarely are you pessimistic, but you realize that you are not fulfilling your purpose on this earth. Mm. And so we almost have to go through one or two at some point in our life to get to that level three. And the level three, I believe, is where I am just now entering into. Mm, that's beautiful. Thank you. And I believe you as well. <laughs> and so it's like, wow, man, it took so much to get here. I almost died. It does take work. But it's, uh, it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of emotional intelligence, a lot yes. of introspection, a lot of research and the people that you surround yourself with. But to get back to the main question is how do we, mm -hmm. as people in each of those categories, so it could apply to any one of those types of listeners, regardless of what your unique scenario is and where you're at in your life, you need in number one to determine what makes you happy and what can make you money because you can fulfill a need by making money, doing anything that doesn't make you happy. So we'll keep it just on finances. We'll keep the relationships and all everything else. We'll say finances and business only for right now, for these scenarios, mm -hmm. we'll say that breakthrough. I need this money and I need this money. So what do you want to do? And what are you good at? What is a hustle that you could do that you would excel at? You would be far above average at that is a natural talent to you that you could also fit into very easily without learning or researching very much a transition that fits around what you're currently doing to pay your bills. So it could be anything from interior designing to, um, you know, doing hair, doing makeup, um, learn, learning a new skill or certificate online. Um, insurance sales is one of the fastest growing um, agencies that are creating um, millionaires in a matter of just a few years because they want to work for it. Mm. So that right there alone, I'm a licensed agent. I never used it or sold insurance, but I kind of wanted to know what, what the fuss was all about. Mm -hmm. I am not associated with any agency, but I will tell you that that entire license in the state of Colorado cost me $300. I got free training. It was a week long. And I I, if had I wanted to go down that path, I could have. Mm, um, so that's a really there's there's tools and there's tricks, but for me that didn't align because that's not my passion. That does not make me happy. Mm. For other people, that might be like, man, I love this. I love that paycheck and that feeds my love tank, and I want to make that money. I want to make those calls every time I get a yes. Mm -hmm. I feel fulfilled. For me, I didn't feel that that was going to do it for me personally. But would you say you had to step into that in order to experience? I had to check. I had to see, and it really I I, I recommend exploring those mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and dipping your toe in the water of possibilities of what you are good at. For me, I love doing hair and makeup. We we're just talking about this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it as a career. I just get, I love doing it for friends for free, never charging. It just, it makes me very happy, but I don't think that I would want to do that every single day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain where well, my passions lay elsewhere in interior design in event design in consulting, coaching, speaking, and, and helping other people find their purpose as well as find jewelry now, which is very new to me. So the things that I'm good at and I excel at, I had to identify for groups one and two specifically, what is it that I really love doing that I'm above average at that if I committed to, and I confirmed that I really wanted to do it could become an expert at. Mm -hmm. and finding what that is and what you enjoy. It could be something as silly as I love to game. You know what? You can get a Twitch account and you can create money gaming on Twitch. There's, there's so many things. It doesn't matter what it is mm -hmm. that there is something that you're very good at right now. I assure you that you could be making money for. So it's really just sitting back and reflecting on that question to figure out what those options are for you. And I, 
love how you answered that because I think it'll enable our listener, whether they're number one, you know, I need something Mm -hmm. right. Low vibrational. Like you were saying, I need, I need to make money immediately. I need to change now. Like something like this, like now we're talking about, this is a level where it's impacting our day-to-day mindset. Mm. Um, It's now becoming possibly, you know, a threat of a mental health issue Mm -hmm. where now we're seeking to self-medicate or to actually medicate. Like we're at such a point. And I think everyone at one point is here Mm -hmm. where we ask ourselves the question, like, I think I really do need help. I feel hopeless and, or I just, I'm lost and I have no idea where to begin. So when you're at that stage, um, I do believe that that breakthrough is going to start with number one, taking care of ourselves, Mm -hmm. um, making sure that we're clear, that we're eating right, that we're getting sleep and rest. I know that that's difficult. We're in that state of mind, but in order to get out of that state of mind for a breakthrough, that's going to be the best way is to look at what you're good at and to start doing the things that you enjoy. Start thinking to yourself, how can I make money doing this? Perfect mm-hmm. example for me. Um, when I was at a low point, I, I miss being around horses. I've loved horses since I was a little mm-hmm. girl. And I thought to myself, well, I could volunteer, but I needed money at the time. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, I wonder if the local stables would let me, you know, do some of the dirty work in exchange for writing lessons. I signed the waiver. They did it. And not only did they pay me, they did let me work the horses. So I was getting paid to ride the horses that I missed being around. And it was an instant boost in my mental health. Mm. So not only am I bridging a tiny gap between the income, but I'm also getting to spend time around what I love. Mm -hmm. And so that's a perfect example of what we can do to create those tiny breakthroughs that lead to the major breakthroughs in life. And, And that small courage you had you know around bartering uh, around mm-hmm. you having that leap of faith to pull the trigger and say well if I do this for you you know can it, in exchange for that could I get this but I think that gave you more courage right mm-hmm. to keep going and oh my gosh if I ask for this mm-hmm. this is what I got so we need to ask for what we truly want in life the worst we're going to get is a no and it's going to redirect us to a yes, <laughs> and, you know, which is another fear that women have fear of failure, you know, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown, fear of, you know, everybody has these different fears. And as I've stepped into, you know, being an entrepreneur and, and speaking the fears that I didn't know were there. You know, and that's where you're going to need a coach. You're going to need a mentor to help you see those gaps that you don't necessarily see. So um, I I just this is this can go on all day because, you know, (laughs) this is why we're together. You know, this is what we talk about. And it's just so much fun. But for the woman, say that's still stuck in the number one. She needs to make money ASAP. Her vibration is low. What could she do in this moment to raise her vibration, you know, so she can step outside her comfort zone and say, you know, possibly do what you did, you know, to bring in the money she needs to feel better about herself. But what would you highly recommend that she do? And I know you said you got to eat healthy, you got to exercise, but what is one thing you would highly recommend her do? Immediately after finishing this episode, immediately after I want you, if this is you to pick up the phone or to grab a journal or to make a promise to yourself or actually create an act and do something that is healthy, that will only reward you. And that will 100% make you feel good. Something that you've missed that you've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. And if you might think, well, you know, I've always wanted to paint. I want to, I miss going to painting class and the painting class is $70 that I don't have right now. You know what? Spend that $70, Mm. spend it because getting that vibration higher is going to bring you that back. And then some from the most unexpected places, it might be someone that you meet at that painting Mm -hmm. class. It might be a thought that you have on the drive home because now you're in a higher vibration, whatever that thing is to you. Now I'm not saying go blow your life savings, but I'm saying immediately after this podcast, take an action, do a thing that will immediately in the next two or three days lead to something that you miss doing that just makes you the happiest on earth. And within reason, invest in that. And invest in personal growth, invest in professional growth. And sometimes that leap of faces, it, it is going to require, you know, 
the tapping into your savings account. It is going to require you getting the money is there. And when you want it bad enough, you're going to do everything in your power to get it because now you realize I'm done with the BS. I'm done with a low vibration. I'm done with not getting the results that I truly want. So when are you going to take a chance on yourself? Because that's what it ultimately boils down to Mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a bet on myself and do whatever I can in my power to get that coach. Who's going to help me scale my business. Mm-hmm. So what would, and this brings up another amazing question. What has been your, if I may ask this question, yes. what has been your biggest investment as it relates to you being an entrepreneur, author, coach, branding strategist, you know, now fine jewelry collection. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hey. Beautiful. <laughs> you. So what, if I may ask, what has been your biggest mm-hmm. investment that you were like, Oh my goodness. Cause I've done them sis mm-hmm. where I haven't been able to sleep at night. You know, you're like, Oh my goodness. Was this a good thing? Was it a bad thing? You don't sleep. But the next morning you're like, I'm going to, I did it. I'm going to move forward. And, and I'm going to find a way. What has it been for you? I was low vibrational being number one in our options. I was going through divorce, um, was transitioning through my business I was very, very low on money. Um, I was spending all of my savings actually from our thrift savings plan in the Marine Corps completely like zeroed out by the way, like nothing um, in 2017. And I was in such a low vibration that I'm telling you something just kept telling me you need to take a trip. You need to just get out of here. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Why would I do that right now? I have no money. I have Mm -hmm. one credit card left that wasn't maxed out and it had about eight grand on it. And I thought, well, that's there. Um, some friends of mine who I always felt great about were like, oh my gosh, can I take a trip to Santa Rita Greece? Do you want to go? And I'm like, I do want to go. I really do want to go. And I will tell you that I put in total 6,000, like $300 and some odd change on that credit card that was left for a 10 day vacation in Santorini, Greece, because I knew deep down that my soul needed that to recharge. Can I tell you that from the time that I booked that trip, Mm -hmm. like purchased the ticket, not arrived in Greece from the time that I purchased the ticket, I had an interview, an initial interview for a job offer that was starting at 60,000 a year Mm -hmm. for a biotech company, which at the time I needed very badly. And Mm -hmm. the second interview was the day before I flew. I found out I got the job the fifth day Mm. while I was in Greece. Not only that, but I mean, it just, and this, we can share another time, but it really launched my journey into trusting myself Oh, because I, it was just a confirmation that I was like, I, 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 this, this feels wrong, but it feels right. Mm. And I can't not do it. This is, you know, I have $2,000 left to my name. My rent was 1800 a month at the time. Mm -hmm. I had barely enough left on my credit card to pay my rent for that month. And I'm Mm -hmm. telling you like clockwork, that initial, they paid me to go to training. Mm -hmm. And I started training immediately upon my return from Greece. And so it's not about the purchase. It's not about the fear. Mm -hmm. It's about the vibration that I was able to take myself out of just by saying, Mm -hmm. I trust myself to do this. And I need this. My soul is craving this and I'm going to freaking be okay. And, And I love how you highlight that specifically because that ability to raise your vibration and say, I'm going to take a chance on myself. I'm going to go to Greece. Now I would say the universe is like, okay, she's ready. Let's give her what she's looking for. So because you were able to pull the trigger and step into that unknown. Now the universe is like, this beautiful goddess is ready. Let's give her, she's made that attempt Mm -hmm. to step outside her comfort zone. Let's give her what she desires. You know, and I I love how you shared that because it's happened to me on several occasions where I'm like, oh my goodness, again, I can't sleep because of a personal or professional Mm -hmm. investment I've made, but because I've taken action, so to speak, in a new scary freaking direction that trust me, it's so scary that I want to vomit or I, again, I've lost sleep over it, but because I've made the choice, I'm decisive and I've taken action. Now the universe, like in, in some beautiful way, I would say God rewards me. That's right. You know, and I'm like, 
oh my goodness, so I need to continuously take action, let go of expectations. So when you raise your vibration, Mm -hmm. you know, and you let go of expectations, what comes is like sometimes is more rewarding than you could possibly imagine. Wouldn't you say so? Yes, ma'am. And to your point, it's in one sentence, the universe isn't going to reward us if we're not rewarding ourselves. Mm. The universe is not going to trust us if we're not trusting ourselves. The people around us are not going to uplift us and want to refer us for business or or help make us laugh if we're not seeking those things out for ourselves. And it's a matter of what we give ourselves and what we give other people and what we give the world and what we give what we believe in. Wherever that resonates for you, that is what we're going to get back. And I assure you, it will always be more. It might not be right away. And we might be like, oh, I put too much into that. I didn't get anything back. I assure you, it's on its way. Might be a few days or years or decades or Mm. centuries, even generationally down the road for your family. But every good act that we put out there in this universe, it will come back to you 10 times over. That's so beautiful it's it's about rewarding ourselves first it's about filling our love tank and this is applicable we're applying it to you know being a high caliber woman entrepreneur but this is applicable to the personal aspect as well Mm -hmm. you know because there might be a woman out there that might be uh contemplating divorce you know Mm -hmm. she needs a little bit more clarity around this touchy subject if you will been there done that right do i need to get a divorce but oh my goodness i've been married for 15 years and this is scary and i have so many bills and what's going to happen the what ifs can go on and on Mm -hmm. but when you take that moment to reevaluate you know and say i'm going to do it for me regardless Mm -hmm. because this is what i deserve you know, and when you're decide, when you're intentional and when you step into, no, this is what I'm going to do. It's, it's honoring yourself. It's honoring your journey. It's learning to fill up your love tank. Um, well, and there's a fine line to use your example of divorce between irresponsibility mm-hmm. and self accountability. Okay. Huge difference. Okay. So when we're considering a a choice where we're going to lose certain things, I'm going to lose the steady income. You know, maybe my spouse supports me and the kids, or I'm going to have to look for another apartment. We're going to disrupt this entire life. Mm. You know what? But what am I accountable to, to maybe children that we share? Mm -hmm. What am I accountable to for my own happiness and also to set my spouse free? Because clearly we're not happy together. So I need to be accountable to myself to say, I might lose a few things here, but how much more am I going to gain by making this difficult decision right now? Ooh, really, really good. Yes. So good. And so what am I losing? I'm, I'm losing, you know, obviously a spouse who I thought would be my best friend, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm losing stability, security in a way, but I'm gaining this freedom. I'm gaining my, I'm speaking up for myself. I'm gaining that example that I want to set for my children Mm -hmm. because they shouldn't put up with whatever, you know, I'm just putting it out there, but I I love, I love that, Mm -hmm. that that you bring that up. The possibility and let it marinate. So we initially, the heartbreaking, the loneliness, you know, through anything that we lose, a a marriage, a relationship, a family member, through Mm. passing, just an opportunity that we were so excited about and some, something just crumbles and it doesn't work out. The the initial Mm. sting and the initial absence of the things that we were so used to Mm -hmm. having around Mm -hmm. is so challenging that we beat ourselves up about it. Yeah. And we don't realize that just around the corner, Mm. if we, the sooner we get out of that vibration and that loneliness, and the sooner we place the responsibility upon ourselves to pull ourselves out of it through the tips Mm. that we provided it previously in this podcast. Yes. As soon as we do that and, and we take the responsibility to get higher in vibration, regardless of how difficult it may be, I'm telling you, the faster we can accelerate getting not only what we lost back from a different source or a different um, vessel of love for us, Mm -hmm. but we will 100% be happier and the possibility will and the opportunities will present itself so much sooner. Yes. But what we end up doing is we get stuck in that spot Mm -hmm. and we never budge or we're trying to reach for the thing that we want, but our vibration didn't follow our goal. Right. Our goal is out here, but our vibration is still here. And then we wonder why when, for example, dating, 
why can't I meet the right person? You know, you're fun, but this isn't lasting. And you know, oh, okay, I'm, I'm trying all these jobs, but none of them are sticky. Mm-hmm. That's because we've set the goal up here, but our energy is still down here. Our vibration is still lonely and it's still devastated and still longing for what's in the past. And Eckhart Tolle, another one of my very spiritual mentors that I've read and followed for about a decade now, he is so huge on the power of now, his own title mm-hmm. of his own book, mm-hmm. Eckhart Tolle, the power of now being present and remembering saying, you know what, tomorrow is important. Let me set that goal, but let me not lose sleep worrying about it. And most importantly, let go what we can of the past, remember the good, do what we can to heal the traumas of what wasn't good, and then get back to that present so that we can slowly and consistently match the vibration of our dreams and goals and next steps that we want to achieve. The power of now, and that's honoring ourselves at this moment, you know, Yes, what the future might bring, we don't know. You know, tomorrow's not a promise. But when you honor yourself right now, that alone uh, enables us to raise our vibration mm-hmm. and feel better about ourselves. And in doing that, we're going to attract Absolutely. what we, uh, you know, what we want. And, and yeah. Well, there's, it's funny, I, if I may bring up from yesterday in Malibu, we met a wonderful woman who ah. um, was a realtor. And I was like, oh, we're chatting, we're chatting. And I'm like, hey, do you know anybody in the area for a friend? And she's like, no, I'm retired. I'm not taking any more clients. And I'm thinking to myself, this is a big down payment. It's a big deal. Like, you don't want any more clients? No, I'm retired. She's like, you know, what's funny is ever since I made the decision to retire, everyone's chasing me to close mm. deals for them. And I don't even, she's like, I remember I would have killed for this a few years ago, but I don't want to do it anymore. And so it's just mm. interesting how it just like, it now it's like coming at her and coming at her. And she's like, no, I don't want yes. your business. I don't want your millions of dollars in commission. She and raised just, her vibration. She raised her vibration. She's like, I decided to do what makes me happy. Mm. So it's important to distinguish the difference between the vibration of what you're trying to attract and the surface level of the present and not what's not working out because even though this is on a straight line we think it's related it's actually not related at all yes. how we feel every single day mm-hmm. and our mind and our hearts is what's going to bring what we want on the same line so 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 good and, and it's you know it's a perfect segue I, I we have to wrap up here you know i i don't want to we're gonna have another episode this is gonna several. keep going after we keep stop going. filming because <laughs> we could talk about this forever and and other things but it's the power of now it's our ability to raise our frequency right now in this moment that matters not tomorrow not a week from now not a month of from now you know or a year it's the power of now to raise our frequency and in doing that everything falls into alignment yes. what do you say so says mm-hmm. like us having fun doing this you know vodcast bringing this wealth of information to the woman or the man who needs to hear it in the moment so having said that i want to personally thank you for being my sister for enabling me you know this is why you're in my home and because you know i i love you dearly respect you and um i want the listeners to understand you know that miss jessica jd is a branding strategist such an influential not only speaker coach but mentor to so many that you can really help them break through you know you can really help them you can inspire them through a breakthrough that they might need in the moment Mm -hmm. to to step up and monetize, you know, their passion or bring in multiple streams of income or whatever it is that they're, they need to do because you've already given us some golden nuggets. So thank you so much for being on this episode. How can our beautiful listeners that are watching contact you and uh, words of wisdom as we close out any parting words? Yes, sister, you would. Thank you so much for your kindness as I'm tearing up over here. Okay. (laughs) Hi, everybody. Once again, thank you for watching Sandra and I's episode on her podcast, Pull the Trigger. I am Jessica JD. You can find me in two different outlets, jessicajd.com or jessica.jay.dee on all of my social media. I'm most active on Instagram 
And with that being said, uh, if you think, oh, you know what? I don't want to reach out to her. She's not going to respond. I check every single DM as I know Sandra does as well. I don't have an assistant. I am very personal with all of my accounts. I'm very Mm -hmm. hands-on. That's the way that I've wanted it. And I believe I will keep it. Uh, So if you have an issue, um, I highly suggest reach out to either one of us and send us a voice clip with your situation and what's going on. I personally will um, promise that if you mention that you heard me here and that you are a friend of Sandra's and you were really inspired, I would love to try to do everything in my power to reply with a few voice clips to help you get you on your way. Complimentary. So thank you so much. Please reach out to me. Um, If you're thinking about it, don't have the fear. Don't be apprehensive. Just do it. Do it as soon as we hang up. Do the same for Sandra. I know she's always going to be happy to help you. And if you're interested, I'm also a spiritual coach and a personal development and leadership mentor. So if there are things outside of branding, marketing, strategy, uh, your profession that you're a little bit stuck with there, I, it's my favorite thing to do as well. Um, and I coach and my fine jewelry line was designed and inspired by the alchemy effect, which is my trademarked fine spiritual jewelry brand and coaching program. Beautifully said. Beautifully the alchemy effect.com. Thank you guys so much for listening and don't be scared. Do something when this podcast ends. Exactly. When we sign it's, off, it's right? It's about pulling the trigger. So pull the trigger, believe in yourself, learn to fill up your love tank. And I hope this serves you. I will see you on the next episode of pull the trigger. Have an amazing day. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Glutathione is a big word. It's the body's own master antioxidant. It's a scavenger for free radical, bacteria, and viruses. There are no products in the market with the ingredient NASET. NASET increases the production of glutathione that's in our body already to strengthen and enhance our immune system, elevate sense of well-being, support muscle strength and endurance, cognitive function, and liver support. It helps with increased energy and blood sugar regulation. Get your bottle of GSH Plus from www.salvationnutra.com.